Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Zilla Jackson back with another video, baby. Let's go. Um, yeah, I was gone for about a week. Had some internet problems and all that good stuff. But uh, we're back at it. And hopefully, we're going to put a little bit more into it. So, I'm going to go ahead and react to a video that came out before my internet went out. I was going to react to it and everything. It's by Sunny v2 or sunny 2 v something like that and um uh, and it's about tiktok's dirtiest predator and that seemed very interesting so let's talk about it and get right into it let's see let's see what happens because uh this this should be very interesting to me very entertaining. Bone chilling Snapchat's horrible videos and a real life sting operation where he'd try to meet a minor. This is the incredibly creepy story of Buddy Haynes, aka TikTok's dirtiest predator. His account going by the name of the Buddy was first registered back in 2018, on which Buddy would describe himself as a 26 year old Jiu Jitsu athlete and gamer. His early what? videos were a laughable display of what you might call his dancing skills. And while this kind of content was fairly innocent at the start, Oh shit. <laughs> oh sh God bless me. God bless me. All right. Let's uh. He then began to post these bizarre provocative videos in which he'd try to come off as a sexy TikTok bad boy. The girls really look for in a guy. You don't have to be funny. Hell, you don't even have to be really that good looking. What they, what they really want is they want a Batman in the streets and a Joker in the sheets. The videos were unbelievably stupid, yet in a bizarre turn of events, they were judged as being so terrible that they'd gained the attention of a few notable YouTubers. He's got a Zelda handbook. He's a little good boy, but then... He does that 360, pulls out some handcuffs, leather coat. Boy, you best watch out for him. He gonna be snatching up your girl all day. This helped the buddy to receive an influx of over 25,000 followers, during which the U- Honestly, at this point in my life, I'm l literally living by the words of Daifu, bro, because, like, we really gotta stop making stupid people famous, and- Honestly, my generation is ruining it sometimes. I, I, sadly, I am a Gen Zer. Uh, I'm 21. Yeah, I'm Gen Z. But, but let me just say this, bro. Okay. TikTok is probably the main reason why we're making so much stupid people famous because we think it's funny we think it's funny and that we give them more followers just like the island boys we give them followers because their shit is so garbage or their shit is so stupid that our tiny little adolescent brains that can't hold attention for more than 10 minutes um has become this way I don't know. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, but you know, we just keep making stupid people famous and we're going to be doomed to repeat the same cycle. Actually, I kind of don't care what we do on social media as long as we're not repeating all the other world wars, as long as we're seeing the the house, as long as we're seeing the signs. I don't care about anything else as long as we see the signs. I'm not, I'm, I'm that one creator that would just stay out, out of his way, out of people's way. I don't like to, well, I'll interact with you. If you ask me about my day, I'm going to tell you how I've been. But like, to go out of my way to try to expose somebody is nothing I would do. That's why I react to people exposing other people, which is pretty interesting because these people do need to be exposed. But I'm not that type of person to ruin somebody's life over what I think, because that just seems extra petty. And I'm probably going to lose a couple people about this, but I am a Christian. Uh, that's irrelevant, but still, I do believe that what 
what you give out is what you're going to receive later on, like karma. But yeah, so I, I truly do try to push out a good narrative. But people like this dude, Buddy Hands, and a couple of other TikTok people are just straight up dumbasses. <laughs> I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to front. They're fucking dumbasses. And they have this big following. They could have been making money on top of money. People their age probably would have, uh, would have liked to get together. You know, the single ones would have probably liked to get together, but they just, they choose to go after minors, which is, which is weird. If you go after a minor and you're over the age of, I'm going to say 19. If you go after like a 17 year old after the age of 19, then you're straight up weird. 18 is cool because you're still a senior in high school. Even then, that's still shaky though. That's still extra shaky. Oh, I'm a senior in high school. I'm a senior in high school. I'm a dated freshman. <laughs> I don't think I was friends with anybody that was dating freshman back in high school. Uh uh. I didn't associate myself with them, bro. Why? Because they're fucking weird. That's why. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It was fucking weird, bro. Like she just got out of middle school. She, like, she hasn't really. No, I'm not even gonna get into it, bro. That's weird. That's, that was just weird to me. YouTuber Slazo would also give his opinion. Do not let this man near you with handcuffs. Never do that. That's not a good idea. And while nobody knew it at the time, Slazo was wise in suggesting to avoid this man with handcuffs as the Buddy's content only became weirder and weirder from here on out. Instead of posting innocent dancing videos or even cringy bad boy videos, he rather began to post various creepy TikTok duets, often involving girls who looked underage. There were multiple videos that followed this same kind of premise. Some were innocent while others were a little little more dicey, leading the buddy to receive his first bit of hate, which he'd address in a dedicated upload. To my haters, all you're doing is fueling the fire. When you comment, like my stuff, follow me, and react to my videos trying to down me, you're just making it worse for you. So, do you- I mean, he's speaking facts, though. He is speaking facts, so sadly he's speaking facts. But, you know, that's just the world we live in. Uh, this motherfucker, okay, so, because I think on a higher level than some other people, I just don't like to show it, because if I show that I'm just a little bit smart, or that I am above average, you're going to expect more from me, and I'm, to be honest, really fucking lazy about, about that. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I go above and beyond it really try to impress people and I do but really at this situation I'm analyzing it and I'm studying it and honestly I'm gonna sit back like I'm a lawyer like like I'm just I'm gonna sit back like a like I'm a jury let's let's or I'm the judge let's say I'm a judge this is this is judge Jackson and we're going to decide today if this man deserves to be outcasted into the world of banishment or he shall suffer the consequences of death itself or he's innocent which by the title looks nothing like he's innocent exhibit a he is duetting minors and doing weird acts which thus say is a predatorial offense now we don't have nothing to say that he has texted or tried to further relations with these minors but who doesn't say it wouldn't happen if he's going as far as duetting and doing other creepy content with minors who doesn't say that he wouldn't go above and beyond. Well, 
let's go ahead and continue to see what our next with our next evidence evidence god dog my do yourself a favor, fuck me, because I will continue to do duets with my fans that love me, and I will continue to do videos from my house where I live with my parents who love and support me, and I support them because they need me. However, this did nothing to stop those who disliked him, as he then posted another video explaining that people had been looking for his personal information. So as you can tell, I'm still here, but I now have another issue. I have not people that found me on Facebook. You harass me on Facebook, and I will take you to the police, because this is getting way too too far people this is too far and it's really no wonder why he was making an effort to hide it as anonymity might have been the only thing saving him from what was about to happen on the 2nd of october 2018 a tiktoker by the name of bit hoji would upload a video explaining that the buddy had been acting a little unethical behind the scenes buddy boudet talks to girls from the ages of like 12 to 15. He messages them on Instagram with very lewd videos and lewd messages and pictures, etc. A group of people, mm. including myself, called him out on it, and now law enforcement is taking over. As mentioned, the buddy had been messaged. Okay, so with Miss Bidmoji statement, um, she has given us the proper, how do I say, evidence to proceed with our case. So, our defendant, Mr. Buddy, has texted minors with the age of 13 to 17. Let's give it that age range. He, we have valid evidence with this man, from this man. Um, but yet we are thinking that he's pleading of insanity mainly because of situations caused by his home living, but that doesn't excuse what he is doing. So, what shall we do about it? Well, let's continue with our case and figure out the various other evidence that shall come up in the future so we can choose whether this dude is a real piece of shit that really should be locked up or he shall be cast away into the depths of Tartarus. Let's find out. ...various underage girls via Instagram, and there was a bunch of evidence to go with it. Oh, how old are you? 14. I mean, may I be honest? Yeah, of course. If it was me, I'd try to make the relationship with you last for years. LOL, I feel like I look stupid. You're okay, don't worry about it. I kinda sorta have a crush on you and shouldn't. And that's basically where he just dug his grave 100%. In a different chat, the buddy sent an inappropriate photo to a girl who he knew was underage, while in another he threw himself a pity party stating, just feel ugly and unwanted. No girl finds me cute or anything. Am I that ugly? I feel like it. However, the best chat logs were gathered by Jay Aubrey, as he was able to message some of the girls back in 2018, when all of this first went. You know, people that say that they're ugly and that they don't, there's no girl that finds them attractive. Really, let's be honest, they just haven't tried hard enough. I ain't gonna lie. I'm ugly as shit, but I, I still, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, I did miss my shot. I do miss my shot sometimes, bro. I, I don't really think that a girl is feeling me and I miss my shot and I think back on it. And I like, I don't know, maybe it's just like the, the introverted extrovert mix that's really in my head because I'd be like so deep in tune with something that I just, I just forget. Like, literally the other day, I went to AutoZone, and I saw this really cute girl, and I really was about to get her number. Like, I was I was thinking about it. She was writing my number down on a piece of paper and, like, what, what battery I was using. And literally, I had the prime opportunity, but I literally just froze and just said, yes, I will take the battery home. And thank you for serving or servicing me and walked out and wished her a better day than she was because there was a real dude that was acting like a piece of shit. But, you know, that's just the town that I live in, so it makes fucking sense. But, but, let's continue. 
down. Well, why don't you just send me something? Well, it's like blowing a kiss or something. If you don't want to, that's fine. Mm. And of course, it doesn't change once he got her phone number. You're right. a hottie and I'm an ugly. Oh, so I see some sugar daddy action at play here. Huh? Don't do something on Snap. Oops, may I be honest? Yeah, sure, haha. <laughs> I sent those videos because I'm sort of turned on and wanted to tease you. The videos in question were abundant and took the story to a whole new level of creepy. You're the cute one here, not me, so. Not fair. Like, I can't even make you blush, so it seems like. <laughs> Make me crush on you even more. However, apparently this whole thing was nothing more than a big misunderstanding, as the buddy would take to his TikTok to state that he'd been hacked, and it was rather bit Hoji, the girl who originally exposed him, who'd been trying to frame him by sending these messages. She'd respond to these claims in the days that followed. I'm flattered that he thinks I'm smart enough to hack into someone's iCloud, and I'm honored that he thinks I'm smart enough to know how to hack into someone's Instagram and send fake DMs. I would not make something up to this I'm sorry I'm pausing like every 30 seconds, but after 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 they introduce his TikTok and all the shit that he's been doing so far within these five minutes, like he's he's really making a case for him to be lower than the depths of Tartars. Like he's like Okay, so let's say, let's say we got the gulag, we got the gulag right here, right? Then we have Tartarus. Then we have the devil sanctum. And then we have hell, right? He deserves to be like deep down lower than that at this point bro <laughs> it's he it needs to be lower than that i don't know i don't know that's that's crazy just to make someone look bad and it's safe to say that nobody else was buying the buddy's excuses as he'd go ahead and turn off his tiktok comments before vacating the account altogether tiktokers such as bit hoji began to celebrate stating that the buddy case has come to a beautiful close with a common sentiment being that he'd been arrested from everything i've seen it's most likely that he's been arrested and thank god yet unbeknownst to everybody at the time this was only the tip of the iceberg as buddy would return shortly thereafter by posting the following video. Yeah, look who's back. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The day is back. I just decided to take a little mini vacation from TikTok just to kind of cool myself off from all the fire that's been going around. So I'm back. There is no stopping me. There is no stopping the storm, the fire that is the bidet. The more followers I get, the more I love to be on here. Even if it's just a piss you off. The buddy was back and creepier than ever. Although it's not like people. So, yet again, we take into the count of. Plead of insanity. Literally. Because who the fuck will come back to the site that has driven them far, far away? Plead of insanity, but yet still lower than the depths of Tartarus itself. So, can he get any fucking lower? Let's continue. People had forgotten about his past, as Jay Aubrey's original expose had gone viral amassing over 2.7 million views, with this newly found infamy leading the buddy to defend himself further in a leaked Snapchat message. Those girls that I did duets with, yes, I did duets. They asked for those duets, first off. It was not meant to be sexual or anything. They weren't supposed to come off that way. The FBI has already investigated me. They have came to my house oh. back in 2018 when all mm -hmm. this went all that happened. They were just asking me what, like, stuff about TikTok and- TikTok was- Oh, that's right. I was a junior when they first came out, but it wasn't that popular. It wasn't that popular when it when it first came out. I'm sweated, bro. What the heck? Yeah, it wasn't TikTok wasn't that big. It was, everybody was still on Instagram and Snapchat. It was like a period where there was no 
you know, good shit coming out. Yeah, so like all the people that that came from Vine went to Instagram and all the and then once TikTok came on and like it started blowing up a little bit, it started getting some traction back in 2019, 2020, then then that's when all the the content creators from Instagram switched over to TikTok so they can make their their videos basically the same. But this is bullshit. 2018 though, that brings back memories, bro. That brings back. Bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get off track. But in 2018, 2017, 2018, it was my sophomore junior year, right? Literally for two years straight, me and my friends ran a fight club in my school. <laughs> Literally, we ran a fight club in the school, bro. We had our designated, we had our designated filmers, our designated betters, and our designated fighters. I was one of the fighters designated, but it was hilarious. We had boxing gloves. We had like we had, we had always got two pairs of boxing gloves. We have one black and one red, and we would go into one specific bathroom at lunch. Like, it would be like, let's say 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes after lunch, bro. And it'd be like, like after it started, it would be 15, 20 minutes after lunch started. That means you got enough time to go eat, go off campus, get your food, come back. And do whatever the fuck you need to do so we can get this train moving, you know? So we got we got the train moving. We got the train moving. And then uh we got we got caught. We got caught my junior year. So me being me and having to always carry around a duffel bag because I always was going to football practice. Like literally, literally. Spring spring training started right after winter break. So I was playing football and spring training started right after winter break. So I carried around a duffel bag so I can carry my shoes, my gym shoes, my gym clothes, my protein powder and whatever the fuck else I needed for workouts. Because they wanted us to come at after school to work out. So they said, fuck it. You bring the boxing gloves. So I brought the boxing gloves. Junior year, I was messing around with my cousin. He had took the boxing gloves out of my out of my bag. And I was like, Cecil, bro. I was like, bro, give me give me back my gloves, bro. Give me back my gloves. Give me back the gloves, bro. I need it. I need to use the gloves, bro. Chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. Then the fucking the fucking uh security guard rolls up and fucking takes the gloves. It's just said no more of that shit. We getting complaints and everything about you guys are taking up the bathrooms and all that. No more, no more of these boxing gloves. No more fighting. I'm like, bro, what? What the fuck? Keep in mind, I still knew half the staff at the school, and I was like, there was a couple of teachers and a couple of staff members that knew I was doing the shit, and they were cool. And they say shit. They was like, all right, that's, that's less of the big fights. And we didn't allow girls to do it. And thank God. That's nothing, that's nothing, nothing trying to, I'm not trying to belittle any gender, right? It's just that the girls at my school were petty as fuck. If they got into the bathrooms and they started fighting, bro, Whoever fucking lost would have took that shit personal. We, us boys, we didn't take it personal. We had 150 pounders going against 300 pound people. Like we did not, we did not give a fuck. <laughs> it was only until we got caught where we had like a grace period of like we don't know what the fuck to do. And then track season started, and we all started doing track, and then. And then my homies graduated, and then I 
went off to a different school. That's that's the fucking end of that shit. <laughs> what it was and that's it as mentioned law enforcement had zero interest in what buddy had done possibly giving him the confidence to continue as only four months later a new video was uploaded by inform overload confirming that the buddy was back to his old ways in a brand new series of snapchats cute i was gonna say you don't have to cover up for me haha -ha. you're cute i'd love to get to know you more wish i was there i'd want you you're beautiful I kind of like you. You'd be a good girl. 16, right? This is the Snapchat that she was talking about that proves Buddy Haynes knows about her age. Buddy had stated in an Instagram Q&A that he typically went for girls between the ages of 18 and 36. So to be caught Snapchatting a girl he knew was 16 wasn't the best look. After being asked were the allegations true, he'd simply state nope. And after a follow-up question of how do you feel about all the allegations toward you, he'd simply write it's all bull, which didn't exactly disprove anything, especially since there was more evidence just around the corner. Less than two weeks after stating that the allegations were untrue, a YouTube account by the name of Jadica uploaded a video talking about a new experience with the Bud A, which is best described in her own words. I found his Snapchat and I started posing as a 16 year old to try and catch him in the act. And here is where I was like, well, you know, I'm not really all that experienced in flirting. And he said that I can practice on him. That's when he said really about me saying, oh, I'm not that experienced in flirting, you know? And then here I told him that I was bored and he said he could make it better and then I asked him what he meant by that and he said oh well I'd probably make out with you haha -ha. and I don't remember why but at some point he said this and I was like um okay well what do you mean by that and he said don't need you falling for me only three months after this exchange the buddy who the fuck wanna fall for you fall fall for you oh my gosh I am who the fuck wants to fall for you after setting up this bullshit ass trap? Fuck you, dude. Oh my god. Like, at this point, bro, we're having way too many, like, predator situations. And it's like, it's like every one out of, no, not even one. It's like every 10 out of 20 creators that's 50 percent of these creators are at a risk of being labeled a pedo for life and that's literally your own fault oh i can't say the p word bro i can't say that okay you're you're literally being labeled as a predator Yeah, bro. We are in shit right now, bro. He was catfished once again, this time by a YouTuber named Activist Plug, who had spent three months convincing the Buddy that he was a 17 year old girl. However, Buddy had apparently learned somewhat of a lesson from his past experiences, as he kept the conversation platonic the whole time, yet he'd still agree to meet up with the non existent 17 year old, where Activist Plug was there to confront him. How are you? Doing good. Good. What you up to? I'm just hanging out. You're hanging out? Yep. Not meeting a friend? No. So you don't know anyone by the name of Cat? No. I don't know anybody named Cat. You weren't meeting anyone here by six? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Buddy had been busted once again, this time in the most embarrassing setting to date, after which it seemed as though the Buddy shenanigans might have finally been coming to an end. He'd retire his presence on TikTok and instead become a streamer on Twitch. However, with his most impressive Twitch clip being him getting five kills on Fortnite, it's not difficult to see how his account, going by the name of Papa Freak, was unable to gain more than 300 followers. Buddy would also try to launch a SoundCloud music career under the name Freak Alpha. However, to put it lightly, the music wasn't very good. Who would have thought that falling in reverse would be the claim to fame and after all these months still king of the game everyone knows my name. It seemed as though the buddy had run out of ways to progress on the internet. Oh my god bro. Oh my gosh bro. Um, I'm glad Capture Culture is really doing something proactive because, like, bro, this is one of the people that actually deserves to be locked away and thrown the key away 
into the depths of Tartarus. We should all be like Asta and get a devil inside of... No, nah, I'm, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. But, like, we should all be like Asta and smack the shit out of these people sometimes, bro. I wish, like, it was legal. Because sometimes these people is really, like, fucking... What? <laughs> it's really, like, a what situation, bro. It's literally looking outside in... And I just don't know what the fuck to say. Like, if I had a friend right next to me, bro. <laughs> if I had one of my friends right next to me, it would have been all over with, bro. We would we would have switched off of this shit because, like, this is fucking... Y'all didn't allow him to fucking just do it once. Y'all allowed him to do it twice, bro. Not even twice. It was multiple times, but you caught him twice, two separate times, canceled him two separate times. Oh my gosh, bro. So we delete his Instagram, up. Twitter, and Facebook before going silent. Rumors began to circulate that he'd been arrested for driving slowly in a school zone, although he wasn't even on the internet to give his side of the story. That would be until January 2021, approximately 18 months after anybody had heard from him, when the buddy would create a new YouTube channel called Papa Freak before uploading a video titled Camp by a Chat Clearing the Air, in which Buddy would finally give his full side of the story. He began by talking about why why he joined TikTok in the first place. Back in uh, 2018, I started TikTok and started enjoying it. I wanted to find an outlet to entertain people. You know, me being the butt of the joke, you know, making cringy videos and be just not really caring what people think. Before giving a possible motive for his own poor decisions. I dealt with a lot of depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, alcohol abuse. There's a lot of those videos that I was not necessarily in my correct state of mind. But he would then explain that he was making an effort to fix his life. I'm staying away from TikTok. As much as you people ask me to go back, I have stopped drinking completely. I'm back on my medicine. I'm in therapy. The Buddy's last real offense seemed to have been his park meetup in 2019. So perhaps after everything, the Buddy has finally learned his lesson. Bone chilling Snapchat. So, by plea of insanity, he gets off with the case of, let's say it together, folks, cast away into the depths of Tartarus. Because, what the fuck? Bro, I don't care, bro. You you say you're on meds and whatever the fuck that you're on, bro. It don't fucking matter what the fuck you're on. You could have been on PCP all I care, bro. You're, you're messing with little kids. You're messing with little kids, bro. That's somebody's... That's literally somebody's child. They still live with them. They still feed them. They literally came from their mother's... You know what? Bro, that's a child. And sadly, this shit has became such a big thing and it really doesn't make sense if there was a way that we could like end it it would be like perfect because like we wouldn't have to worry about this shit no more and this is me talking normally not within the lawyer standpoint even though i'm not even trying to be a fucking lawyer <laughs> i'm just trying to i'm just trying to speak my point of view um If we could demolish the whole situation altogether with the men over the age of 19 again, over the age of 19, going for these young women, not young women, because I don't care as long as they're 18 and above. 18 and above, you can go to date whoever the fuck you want. But these 18 and below, you men that are going after these 18 and below, or you women that are going after these 18 and below, you guys are literally the issue and why, one reason of why we as a human race are failing as a whole. 
you guys need to get your fucking acts together because soon or like probably in the future somehow so when whenever in the future when the time comes I feel like there I feel like there there is like an ent- you know, entity that is like analyzing us like above besides God, you know. Besides God, how we say that how we find out that aliens are real and stuff like that. It's not me trying to sound weird or anything. But like how we find out that aliens are real. I feel like there is some type of entity that is observing what what we're doing and we're honestly failing but uh that's about it for this one um with that said and done even though it was a long one if you guys watch the full thing i appreciate it. if you guys don't i still appreciate it as long as you click on the video honestly not even just like subscribe all that I'll catch you on the next video. Simple as Jackson. Peace. Oh my gosh, people need to get this shit together.